Julie, thanks so much. Coach, really excited to talk after a win, obviously big win against Green Bay, but also I just I love how you guys played, specifically this yeah. guy, uh, Terry McLaurin, I thought did an excellent job in this game. A couple big plays for you. This one in particular, nothing too fancy here just to go mm -hmm. up the sideline and makes a nice, comp uh, nice contested catch here against one of the best coverage players in the NFL. Absolutely, and probably the biggest thing really is from the start, Terry's get off. Mm. He makes a quick jab step inside, freezes the man just for a second, then gets outside and gets vertical. Yeah, love it. And again, like, you know, I think people undervalue Terry's vertical speed, yes. right? Oh, without and a doubt. For him to run by this guy and then the physicality, you know, he's not the biggest guy in the world. He's not 6'5", 230 pounds. But for him to make this contested catch here, got to love that as well. Well, the biggest thing about it, more so than anything else, is really how stout he is, okay? Yeah. He can control his body, put his body between the ball and the defender, and really he's the only one that has a chance to catch this ball. But if you go to the tight end zone and you take a real quick look, watch how Taylor takes the safety out of the yes. game. Yes. Okay? Let's, let's talk about the coverage real quick here, Coach, because it is. They, they, we talked about how Green Bay, they yep. like to run a lot of cover three. This is cover three, right? You yep. got you, thirds. This guy's going to roll down thirds, thirds here. And, again, you got to make sure that this guy – doesn't get involved in the play. And that's Terry has nothing yep. to do with that. That I like how you said, this is all Taylor. Let's go take a look at the end right. zone real quick. So as you look at the tight end zone, watch how once he gets the ball, he's looking to his left after the play fake, okay? Yeah. The play fake freezes the linebackers, gets the safety, the post safety to walk more towards the middle right. of the field, which really means that if Taylor comes back and throws the deep ball, there's no chance for anybody to come get in the way. Yes, and, and again, like love that by Taylor. Love the understanding of the coverage, yep. right? And again, Sometimes you just got to give your big dog a shot, and he makes an excellent play. You're out, and then we got to talk about this too, Coach. This is some wide receiver stuff. I love how he gives him enough space yes. on the sideline here that, if he, that he can miss this ball out as yeah. opposed to having to be perfect with the throw. It's a great throw, but a little bit of space by Terry. Love that. Absolutely. One thing he doesn't allow is himself to get pushed to the sideline. Yeah. And, again, that goes to because here's a guy who's very quick, great jab step, gets himself outside, gets on the sideline, but doesn't get pushed to right. it and gets vertical. Absolutely. And then, again, so love this. They're, they're going to play a little bit man. They don't play yeah. a lot of man, but man coverage. And I love here, again, how Taylor understands who you want, who you want getting the ball in man-to-man -man coverage, and that's this guy down here. And the call by Scott to ensure that you've got a man beater married with his own beater up top, I thought was yes. really nice. And again, you see Terry's quickness yep. and his ability to just kind of create space for himself. And the nice thing about this is Taylor anticipates it because he knows he's getting pressure off the edge. So what he does is he, he goes ahead and retreats, but he has enough to put it on the ball and he throws it on time. Yeah, on time. And then, Coach, this is maybe, this is kind of one of those sneaky things that people don't, again, underestimate about Terry, but look at the strength here yeah. to stay in bounds in a yes. critical situation when the clock's winding down. I mean, coach, like that is a pretty cool thing for me to see there. I mean, you, you don't expect to see that from receivers normally and they, the intelligence also. And then this coach, man, I'm getting excited here. This is my, maybe my favorite play of the season so yes. far, right? Again, you get a little bit of pressure up the middle um, by, uh, by Clark here. Great, great rusher right here up in the A gap. Taylor with the composure here. Again, he deserves a ton of credit for this play. But I love when he throws this ball, Coach. This does not look open to me. No. This doesn't look open to anybody, I don't think. Maybe right. to you. You know him better than me. But Well, again, we knew he was coming back. Or yeah. I shouldn't say we. <laughs> Taylor <laughs> knew he was running the comeback, and it's to the sticks. Yeah. So what Taylor really does is he's anticipating it, yeah. and he's throwing it to the sticks. And the thing I love about this, Coach, is that he is – fighting through this ball because right now this is a pretty even yep. even opportunity here he pushes he accelerates that football which gives him an opportunity to make that play yes. and that's the kind of stuff that a, a true number one receiver does and that's probably why you went and paid him all that money absolutely because again things like this this part of the game when you want it clutch situation who do you want to get the ball to terry's most certainly one of our guys yeah absolutely coach coach as always i really enjoy talking ball with you excited to see what this group does next week against indianapolis all right coach so Always exciting to talk film with you. We get to talk about something kind of fun. I think this is a little bit nuanced and uh, kind of one of those wrinkles that comes up when you're watching a game is this overload that Indianapolis runs on third down. They get their three big guys to the top here. Just talk about how that kind of can stress an offense because you guys do some similar right. stuff too. Well, the biggest thing right now and, and looking at this and having watches, what Indianapolis is trying to do is they're trying to create some some man matchups. Right. Right. And then what they're trying to do is they're going to bring the nickel off the edge. The nickel okay. being the guy over the bunch there. Correct. The 30. He's going to come up, and he's coming up inside. So what really should happen on this, and based on what I've seen, it looks like they're turning their protection to the right side. Mm -hmm. The center's going to take the nose, okay? The guard will take the three, mm -hmm. and it looks like the tackle's kicking out to get the wide five. 
And okay. I think you, you said something already that I think is interesting. Like, you, you want your old lineman to block the four bigs, right? Correct. So when you get a lineman like this, this backside guard here can work to the right. And so you should, numbers-wise, be able to pick this up. Correct. And really what he should be looking at is he should be looking for anybody coming inside to his side. Yeah. So he should be spying, as far as it looks to me, at the safety. Yep. At the at the uh, and at the linebacker, right. those should be his two reads. Yeah. But as you watch this play unfold, where where I think the problem is, I think the running back makes the wrong read. The backs, man, they're always screwing protections up, you know. <laughs> well, the biggest thing, and we're going to pop over to the to the tight end zone so we can see how it unfolds. Because again, watch the offensive line to the right. Yeah. Watch again, the the the, the center is going to take the one, the guard's going to take the three, yeah. and the tackle is going to take the wide five. Okay, which means to Those me are the, the defensive linemen there, yep. Correct, and what it means to me is the back should be looking for anybody inside, and he could be reading, in my opinion, from, the, from, the, from 50, 58 over to his right I side. I see, yep, because mm -hmm. uh, that's where his vision should be. But his vision's on the other side of the offensive line here, right? So correct. So he's, he's, he's put himself in a bad spot pre-snap here. Correct. And then again, correct. like I think it's interesting, too, if you watch the, uh, the nose and the three technique, watch how they loop here. Yeah. Doesn't near, I think the guard could even stay home on this, potentially, depending on what the protection call is. Correct. And that's yeah. the biggest thing. But in, in an overload situation, what you're look, hoping for is you're hoping for a series of one-on-ones, yep, which, which allows the guys to win. Yep. And then you're allowing, uh, then you're hoping is the back is releasing fast. Right. So as he gets out fast, that means that their nickel is going to come unblocked, and that's exactly what happens. And I guess there's an expectation that you're not going to blitz to the three-man surface usually, right? Well, there is, but, but that's the funny thing about it is that when you come from the, from, from the overload side, yes. you've got a series of one-on-ones. And so the unblocked guy yes. is going to be the guy coming off I that see. edge. I see. Yeah, absolutely. See, because if you look at this, too, and we look at where the back is looking, yeah. it looks like the back has got 34. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you almost wonder, as this happens, okay, if they're going right, yep. should the guard on the left side of the center – block the one, the yeah. center block the three, the tackle block, uh, the guard block the five, yeah. and now the tack is the tackle responsible. Yeah, tackle or the guard, right? Who's pushing See, through here, yeah. Because look what they did. They got a full turn. Yeah. They have a full turn. Full slide, right, from the yeah. guard over. They got the yeah. backside tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and again, that's the funny thing about these protection wrinkles yep. is it stresses your rules, right? Correct. And so just making sure guys are prepped and they know what they're doing because they do have a couple different patterns off of this same look, which makes good Correct. defensive philosophy. Correct. So you have to be ready for it. And if you are going to have a full slide and you're going to turn everybody that direction, that means that the back is really going to come out. He's going to come out hot. Yep. Okay. And maybe that's where he needs to go with the ball. Absolutely. And so, again, like this is one element of what they do. They, you know, they want to play a lot of cover three. The other thing they do, which I think is very interesting, is in the red zone, they kind of change their coverage philosophy. They go from a single high, middle field close, safety standing in between the goalposts, to this split safety structure. Mm -hmm. Why do coordinators do that? Well, because when, when you get down into a certain part of the red zone yeah. and you play two red, yeah. okay, or red two, whatever you want to call it, you're just playing, playing a cover two zone. Mm -hmm. You're trying to play it as a match coverage. Yep. And you're also, all you do is you practice specific routes, saying that these are the routes that we can always anticipate to get. There's, there's basically um, six areas of attack. Right. Okay. It's first one is to the, to the flat. The right. second one is to the seven. Uh -huh. Okay. The third one is to the post. Yep. The fourth one is right in front of the Mike Backer over the ball. We call yeah. it OTB. Then, then it comes and back down to its... You can kind of see it here. You can see yep. the corner to the right of the safety, the middle yep. of the field, and then when this linebacker drops, drops. out, because in Tampa 2, that's what he does, right. that's the other zone that they're going to attack. Correct. And then when you watch the routes that are run, okay, they're all routes designed to beat this. Because, again, here's a great illustration. Down here, you're going to get a flat seven route, okay? Yeah. The running back goes to the flat. Yep. The, the, the X receiver runs a seven. Yeah, corner. So now yep. the quarterback has a high-low option. Okay, so that's one of the stress points. Yeah. You look at the other receiver, he's attacking the middle zone because right. he gets inside, okay, at the post. You look at the tight ends running a shake and back in over the ball. Yep. And then you've got the dig coming, I mean, the uh, inside coming back from the top. Yeah. And again, like, it's funny because they don't run this coverage all the time, but they understand where the weaknesses of the coverage, right? Correct. And they can, like, see the corner here doesn't need to get this much depth, but he understands. He's got to take away the corner to get to the flat because this is third and eight. And uh, a touchdown, if they don't get a touchdown, it kills this play. Correct. And, 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 and the thing about this more than anything else is, to me, if I'm the quarterback, I come out 
I'm going to come out looking at the flat first. Right. Because I'm trying to influence the yeah. corner. <laughs> so if he can get the corner to come down sooner, yeah. he can throw the seven because look at, look at what happens as soon as he breaks down. Yeah. So if he had thrown the seven, that's a touchdown. Yeah, right. So, again, it's like you said, because he comes out like he's going deep first. Right. It influences the quarterback to throw the fastball to the flat right. instead of hold it for a second and then go to the seven. Yeah, and, and again, like how important is it to know where that landmark is for the offensive coordinator? Say they start running their cover two or their quarters here, right? Because it, it changes how you call the game. Absolutely, because again, you're going to call a route that beats that. Yes. Okay, right. and so if I know and I'm anticipating this, then that's where I'm going to go. Right. But if you see what they did, they ran a couple routes that were really designed for, for man as well at the top. Right. Watch, watch the, uh, the route that's being run by the Z receiver. Right. Shake and then breaks back inside. Right. So that's really saying, hey, if I got man coverage on him, that's where you want to turn and go back to. Because you want concepts that are good versus what you think they're going to run. And then Correct. if they were to throw something else in there, something that would give you an answer, right? Correct. Because again, if this, was a man, if this was a man concept, you know the corners got, got the X receiver, yep. then this running back, a linebacker has to come down and cover the running back absolutely. fast to the flat. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And so again, like that's kind of some fun stuff that you do on the defense side of the ball. And to me, the story offensively this week is Sam Ellinger, right? Yes. Who would have thought you guys would be playing against Sam Ellinger yes. this week? Very different skill set than our guy Matt Ryan. Correct. Very much so. Matt's a very prolific style passer. He's tall in the pocket. Mm -hmm. He's got a strong arm, makes quick decisions, can get the ball out. Um, Sam has got a little bit of that RPO ability. Yep, right. He's got a little bit of the, uh, the, the quick scramble ability, which we see right here. This is, this is potentially a, a, a designed quarterback draw slash if you get an option to throw the ball, throw it. Yeah, and it's interesting with that number four, Coach, it reminds me a little bit. Yeah, it does remind yeah. me of Taylor. And that was, when, that was really my first thought when I heard he was, coming, that he was going to play. Yeah. I remember him when he was coming out a couple years oh, ago. Oh, really, yeah. Liked who he was, very competitive young man out of Texas, had a, had a very nice career there. Uh, got an opportunity last year to, to come in and, and, and be part of what Indianapolis is trying to do. And as he's growing and developing, you know, these are, these are the things that he does well. Again, the threat for the run is always there. Yeah. So you have to be aware of that. And, again, he, they, they do run quarterback draw. They do run RPO. So we have to be on our, our, on our game. Another thing that sticks out to me is a lot of times young quarterbacks do well against man coverage. Yes. Right? And so how important is it to kind of make sure, maybe not play a ton of zone, but give him something that he's not used to seeing? Well, that's exactly it. We have to do some things that, that are different for him. You know, yeah. if, we're, if we're playing man coverage, we've got to make sure that we're, we're playing at the right time because the last thing you want to do is have seven, uh, you want to have seven guys with their backs to the line we're of scrimmage. Absolutely. And, and then if you're playing zone, you want to make sure you disguise it, and now he's got to read his way from going from what he's typically used to in man to finding the zone. Yeah, absolutely. Going to be an interesting challenge, Coach. As always, really enjoy watching the tape with you, and can't wait to see you guys on Sunday. All right.